Every R programmer, at one point or another, has uttered the phrase, my code is slow. And this is usually followed with tears and curses, and not necessarily in that order. But what do you mean by slow? Is one second slow? A minute? An hour? This is obviously problem dependent. What you need is code that is fast enough. To determine if it is worth changing your code, you need to compare your existing solution with one or more alternatives. This is what we mean by benchmarking, and the concept's straightforward. You simply time how long each solution takes, and all things being equal, select the fastest. Benchmarking is a two-step process. First, construct a function. Typically, the function has an argument that enables you to vary the complexity of the task. For example, a parameter that alters the data size. Second, you time this function under different scenarios. Let's have an example. Suppose you want to generate a sequence of integers. There are three obvious ways to do this. The first, use a colon. The second, the sequence function with the default increment step size. And the third, the sequence function where we explicitly specify the step size. We begin by wrapping the options and functions and allow the sequence length n to be passed as an argument. Next, to determine how long the function takes to run, we wrap the function again, but this time with system.time. Running this code produces three numbers. User, system, elapsed. Roughly, the user time is the CPU time charged for the execution of user instructions. The system time is the CPU time charged for the execution by the system on behalf of the calling process. And the elapsed time, the important one, is approximately the sum of the user and system. This is the number we typically care about. So in this example, it took 0.06 seconds for the colon function, but 1.6 seconds for the sequence function. I often use system.time during an analysis. I set my code running as I leave the office and want to know how long the job took when I return the next morning. However, I also want to use the result. In this case, we use the arrow operator. Using the arrow within a function call performs two tasks, argument passing and object assignment. This allows us to both time and store the operation. The equals operator only performs argument passing or assignment. So using equals inside system.time will raise an error. As well as considering elapsed time, it's worth calculating the relative time. This is simply a ratio. So in this example, the elapsed times are 0.06 and 1.6 seconds. The relative time is therefore 26. That is, the seek by function is 26 times slower than the colon function. The micro benchmark package is a wrapper around system.time and makes it straightforward when comparing multiple functions. The key function in this package is the unimaginatively named microbenchmark. In this code, we are comparing functions colon, seek default, and seek by. The times argument specifies how many times we should call each function. And as a bonus, the CLD column provides a statistical ranking of functions. As you would expect, the colon operator is the fastest function for generating a sequence of integers and takes on average 220 milliseconds. In the next exercise, you'll get a chance to time various functions and calculate the relative times.